Hello everyone and welcome to our new series. As promised, I'm going to be playing a Fall of the Samurai campaign. Um, and this is going to replace my England campaign for the time being for the next couple months. Um, I am decided, of course, uh, as to who I'm going to play. I'm going to play as the Nagyoka. It was between these guys, who are of course staunch supporters of the Shogunate. Uh, it was between Nagyoka, Satsuma, Sue and Saga, but I only picked uh, Nagioka because of their bonuses to westernization. Um, I feel it is also prudent to point out right now that I'm also playing with Darth Mod, the Steam version of Darth Mod for Shogun 2, uh, just downloaded via the Steam Workshop, and I'm pretty sure, I'm like 100% sure actually, that that is the only mod that I'm playing with right now. Uh, perhaps there's a camera mod as well, but that's about it. Um, yes, so we are going to play as the Nagyoka, and if we're looking at uh, their bonuses here, they've got income from business, 5% uh, chance of geisha actions, which is pretty pretty unimportant. Uh, we've also got alacrity, which is 15% to the reloading skill of rifle units, plus 15%. Uh, so that's technically 15% more bullets that we can fire in a battle. And also we have Foreign Trade, which uh, gives us a negative 15% to the recruitment cost of modern units. So as you can see from Nagioka's uh, traits, they are well positioned to uh, adopt Western style of war. And that's pretty much what we're going to do right away. We're going to uh, recruit a bunch of rifle units, build some battleships, and just blow the shit out of the Emperor, pretty much. Um, there's a little blurb here that I'm going to read about the Nagioka. Uh, just some background, the Makino clan of Nagyoka are loyal to the Shogun rather than the Emperor. They are administrators rather than warriors and claim descent from Takanuchi no Sukune, perhaps? The legendary statesman advisor to five great emperors of old. You know that guy. He was he was big way back when in the, uh, the whole advisory world, I suppose. Uh, Nagyoka benefits from its ruler's love of modern ideas and their links to foreign arms dealers. The domain has better business skills and economic bonuses, it can produce modern style units at lower cost than others, and Nagyoka troops can reload on the battlefield at speed. So that's exactly what we are looking for. Um, I think the Obama, uh, or was it the Sendai, one of these two was also a close uh, choice for this series, I can't quite recall, but um, Satsuma is a good one as well, pretty much just really good at administration and uh, they're also hell-bent on westernizing, I, I, would, I would say. Um, Sue as well, uh, good, or no, it's not Sue, perhaps it's Tosa? Uh, Tosa is focused on naval warfare, it appears. Uh, well, for sure, uh, Sega was one of them. It was between Sega and Nagyoka when it came down to it in the end. Um, but really, uh, Saga is more dependent on, it appears, artillery um, and ships more than anything, and also industrial buildings, but nevertheless, you know what, let's just uh, take a look at our options really quick, I don't know if we want a short campaign, perhaps a long campaign, uh, we'll play it hard, um, I think Darth Maul actually makes the game quite a bit harder from the get-go anyway, it's been a while since I've played a Fall of the Samurai campaign, last time I played um, as a traditionalist, and I think it was possibly Choshu, or... Josai? I can't quite remember. Um, oh no, of course it was Aizu. I played as the Aizu before when I was traditionalist, and of course that is right next to where we are now. So I suppose I'm going to be retracing my footsteps a little bit, but we don't have to worry about that. Okay, long campaign, hard difficulty, and you know what? More options. Show CPU moves. Battle time limit. No, we're not going to search continuously for other players. Screw that noise. Okay. You know what, let's jump right in this campaign here. My god, I'm actually very excited. Fall of the Samurai, I've got to say, is perhaps one of my most favorite Total War experiences behind some of the mods for uh, Medieval 2. Fall of the Samurai uh, definitely takes the cake because it it's just so well polished. Shogun 2 was a good game. Uh, had a few uh, bugs for me upon release, but nothing game-breaking, but then they released uh, Rise of the Samurai, I would say, which was kind of boring to me. I don't know. I still have, haven't played a full campaign of that yet. But then Fall of the Samurai came, which was just Shogun 2 Plus, pretty much. It was polished to the nines. There's a bunch of new features, new modified features. And I'm really hoping that's what Attila is going to be. Uh, but it looks like Attila is more like a Napoleon 
uh, rather than a fall of the samurai. But anyway, like I said, let's just jump right into the campaign here. My gosh. After the Sengoku Jidai, peace reigned for 200 years. In Kyoto, the Emperor continued as divine head of state. But real power was held by the Tokugawa Shogunate. For two centuries, they ruled with absolute authority. Japan prospered. The people were content. In 1853, American warships changed everything. <laughs> then Whitey showed up and the pretty much ruined everything. The West and signed the Treaty of Peace and Amity. The gates to Japan while open. Trade was established, but the agreements favored the Western powers. I really love how cutscenes at this point in time <laughs> in Total War uh, were CG cutscenes, but uh, they never actually got around to animating faces, so we got these weird wooden... Uh, Puppeteer like movements, it's fucking fantastic. Of all Western powers. Ten years of diplomacy cast into the sea. <laughs> These guys are just like, shall we? We shall. And then they just march in and slaughter a bunch of. Uh, of white folk, this guy looks like uh, looks like an older Ryan Gosling. <laughs> the Western powers gave the answer. To run out the guns. On my command, fire. Shit. Now I think this would really fucking suck, like, you're just on the dock, I don't know, packing up some tea, and then all of a sudden these uh, white guys are like, open fire, and they just demolish your entire livelihood. Not good. The Emperor brought death to his people. The Imperialists would pay for their misguided actions. Order had to be restored. To strengthen our position, the Shogun allied with the French. We will study their ways and discover their secrets. Only then can we destroy the fools around the Emperor and return honor to Japan. The Shogun must be victorious. Nagaoka Domain. The Makino family once served as retainers to the Tokugawa when they ruled Mikawa province. Now, as masters of our own domain, our loyalty to the Tokugawa Shogunate is as strong as ever. We have learned of the movement to overthrow them, and we will do everything in our power to prevent such a disaster. Our first priority should be to neutralize the threat of imperialist attacks from the West. By moving westward and subjugating enemy domains, not only do we protect the Shogun's interests, but we bring our troops closer to Kyoto. The ancient city cannot be allowed to fall into imperial hands any more than we can allow the Shogun's seat in Edo to fall. When war comes, we, the people of Nagaoka, will be ready. We will defend Japan's interests in the face of adversity. For the Shogun! All right, here we are on the campaign map, and we've immediately 
been issued a mission. Oh my god. The conflict between the forces of the shogunate and those of the emperor. Every clan. I'm so sorry. There's so much intro stuff going on here. Um the object of the campaign game is to secure allegiance to our cause and capture territory. When our clan's fame reaches a certain level, we must choose to rally behind one power or the other, or attempt to assume personal control of the country. This last option will lead to all but our most loyal allies turning against us. Okay, I think that's it. We, we're done with all of the intros uh, from our advisors and whatnot. But like I said, we have a mission issued almost frickin' immediately. Oh my god, look at the pollu- look at all this pollution! Oh my god, that's just ruining the Japanese countryside. So our mission is uh, developing our potential. We, um, we actually have to uh, increase our clan's development level, and in return, uh, we will gain inspired endeavors for 12 turns, which I think is a year, um, which will increase our wealth generated by buildings across all provinces by 50%. So that's lovely. Okay. You know what? Let's just do a quick overview of our situation, and then we can just start flying through the turns. We have a navy, and it has two gunboats in it. Or, sorry, one gunboat, Chio Degata class, and then, of course, our wooden corvette, Chiton class, and they're just going to sit in our harbor for now. Um, well, actually, what's our up... Oh, my goodness. What's our upkeep on these mothers? Uh, 300 gold coins per turn for these two ships. I don't know if we need those right now so actually you know what I'm going to disband these two ships there we go an additional 300 coins per turn um, we have one city Echigo um, Echigo I'm not sure where the stress is on the word um, and in Echigo we have um, an inn that's about it uh, some farms a harbor and a telegraph office that's the nice thing about Nagioka is that they start with a uh, railway station right outside their capital, and that is a uh, very powerful uh, early, mid, even late game. Actually, no, it's mid to late game it becomes quite powerful when railroads are actually being built and whatnot. Um, we can actually begin to start plopping down buildings uh, as we wish, but let's just refrain from that for now. We have uh, our daimyo in the capital, and he's got a unit of spear levy. Uh, we have Makino Tadakuni, and um, I'm not sure what his relevance is to our clan. Whoops, uh, I'm looking for clan management. There we go, family and council. So here's our daimyo. We've got one son, and it is Tadakuni, who is uh, the guy that I just picked. And then, of course, we've got another general, Tsuginosuke. Kawaii, oh, so kawaii. Tsuginosuke? Um, just call him Su, I suppose. We've got uh, Su... Su Kawai out in the field right now, and he is actually leading our largest army. He's got a unit of line infantry, matchlock, kachi, spear levy, yari kachi, and then, of course, himself. And we can just combine our son's army with his. We may as well. Um, he can be lieutenant, I suppose. Actually, you know what? Should our daimyo lead the charge? Uh, we can't actually give any commissions to our generals right now, so there's no reason that our daimyo cannot lead this army. So we may as well... Uh, do that. We don't need three generals though, so we'll just place our additional generals in Echigo. Uh, well, I'm sure that one of these generals can serve as a lieutenant to our daimyo. <laughs> Perhaps his son, or even Su. Su, maybe? I'm not sure. Um, in addition to these armies, we also have a single agent. It's our geisha, and... We don't really have anything for her to do at this point in time, but she may as well head down south to our only enemy's territory. Um, just to uh, start disturbing the shit out of them. Um, okay, let's take a look at our clan management. Like I said, uh, there's our family. We're pro-shogun, of course. Our stronghold is Echigo, that's our capital. Victory conditions, we must capture 26 provinces, um, including Musashi and... Yamashiro, but they have to be held by forces loyal to the Shogun. Um, 50 provinces have to be loyal. Um, okay, yeah, that's pretty much our only thing. We have to have 50 loyal provinces, and within those provinces we have to have Musashi and Yamashiro. And then we ourselves have to capture 26 provinces. Uh, our clan traits we know about. Uh, clan development, level 1. We have negative 20% to the recruitment cost of traditional units, so we're still fairly traditional right now. 
we are gaining bonuses to tra traditional units, uh, to morale, and to experience. Um, and there we go. There's our daimyo, Makino Tadayuki. Uh, there's our family. Uh, we've seen that. Our records, which is not really important right now. Um, let's see, our diplomacy. Uh, of course, we are pro-shogun. Aitsu is pro-shogun as well, and they are on our borders, and we are allied with them, and we are trading with them. Um, Numata is indifferent, it appears, uh, to us, but they are pro-emperor, so that's not great. Toyama, we should actually look at trading with, because they are also pro-shogun. And maybe an alliance eventually, perhaps. Uh, there we go. We now have trade with uh, those assholes, Toyama. And then we shall begin trade with uh, Yonatsawa. There we go. Trade agreement with these guys. This deal is unacceptable. Oh my god. No one uh, wants to trade with us right now. Um, I would like to trade with Sendai, but they don't have uh, the ability to trade. And you know what? We may as well begin trade with Numata. And whoever else Please will trade with us, because although they will profit from our trade, we will also profit. And, of course, we will reap. Uh, we will get better use of that money. So I'm not really worried about it right now. Um, and perhaps we can actually convert these guys to our side eventually. Um, let's see. Utsunomiya as well. Utsunomiya. My gosh. Um, they want to trade. Yeah, I gotta apologize. I'm gonna butcher the crap out of the Japanese punctuation and pronunciation just because I'm uh, a white guy, if you can't tell. I'm Canadian, and I've never really uh, attempted to learn or speak Japanese ever, but I'm gonna give it uh, my best shot, and if you're really upset with it, then, uh, well, I suppose you can leave a comment, but also, I'm sorry, there's nothing to be done about it. I can't avoid saying place names, so I'm just going to do my very best. If you uh, notice that I'm pronouncing something uh, repeatedly wrong, then just leave a comment about like a fanatic kind of thing, or maybe get me to look into it, because uh, honestly, I have no idea. Um, but that's pretty much uh, our diplomacy. We are, sorry, I forgot to take a look at our allies. We are allied with Aitsu who is on our eastern border, and then we are at war with Matsushiro, who is uh, south of us, I believe? Yes, the only province south of us uh, in North Shinano, is that the... yes. And then, here's our clan development. We're gonna have to pick a, uh, a policy to get looking into. Uh, we can look at epic architecture, <laughs> um, consular court, we can start researching Shi, or arms deals, and I think arms deals uh, would be a good one just so we can recruit uh, sharpshooters and whatnot. I would really like to recruit, um, whatchamacallit, line infantry as soon as possible. Oh my gosh, that's not what I meant to do. Um, but I don't quite remember what I need to recruit to do that. I think I actually just need to build uh, some military buildings and that's about it. Um, so this will reduce my modernization, um, will enable some traditional uh, abilities, Increase unit replenish replenishment and allow me to recruit matchlock catchy. We're not really looking for that right now. Um, negative 2 modernization for this one. Plus 1 clan-wide happiness. Negative 10% cost to the construction of settlements across all provinces. That looks to be quite good. What do we have to say about epic architecture? The architecture of great castles, temples, and palaces is intended to overall and dwarf the ambitions of lesser men. Yet, it is only by creating such magnificent structures that the rules of engineering are made plain, so that even greater buildings can be made by simple craftsmen. Who, then, is memorialized? The builders, or the masters? Really good, uh, really good philosophical question there. Um, so we are immediately beginning, uh, research into the civil policy tree, um... We may as well, and then our finances. Okay, 270 what? There's no uh, unit of measurement here. I, I 270 gold coins. Okay, um, yen maybe was yen a thing at the time? I don't think so. Perhaps I really have no idea. Um, but there we go. Tax income 270 gold. Trade income 226 gold, and then other uh, clan estates 1350. So overall, we're making 1800 gold coins per turn. And we are burning through 800 of that per turn for army upkeep, pretty much. Uh, trade. Trading with Aitsu, Toyama, Numata, Utsunomiya. Utsunomiya. And we are not trading any resources, apparently. Uh, here's our summary that you can take a look at if you're so inclined. But you're not really going to glean any information that we haven't already looked at. Okay, so 1,000 gold coins per turn. Okay, you know what? Now we can actually start 
throwing our money down. We need to recruit some new units so we can head south and destroy these assholes because they've actually got quite a large garrison. Um, sorry, I meant to take a look at the army. Uh, four random units. Um, and then, of course, like I said, the garrison. We're going to have to deal with some general units, I would say, there. So we'll get our general to recruit some levy infantry? No, let's see. Can we... Uh, can we build anything? Can we burn this down and replace it with a military building? No. You know what? Let's just upgrade our town, get an additional construction slot, and then we can build a uh, military building of some kind. And then we can also uh, build some tenant fields and increase our income by a shit ton. But I think what we need to do right about now is actually recruit a bunch of levy infantry. There we go. Two units. Uh, yeah, we have two recruitment slots. Uh, so there we go. We, we'll, we'll recruit some levy infantry just to fill out our uh, line infantry role. We have Matchlakachi uh, and line infantry. I don't know who is better, these guys or uh, the levy infantry. Well, there's 375 levy infantry and 120 of these matchlock guys. Um, well, these match, or, sorry, the levy infantry actually kind of suck shit in melee. But that's just fine. We're not going to get into melee too much. We'll keep a hold of these Matchlakichi until we actually recruit those levy and have a stronger army. But here we go. It is uh, the middle of winter in 1864 and we're going to end our first turn of our new series. Okay, so we have recruited our two units of levy infantry in Echigo. Um... And they are currently on their way to joining up with Makino's army. Um, of course, it is winter and we're going to suffer attrition if we uh, march into enemy territory. So we'll just uh, make a camp on the border and <laughs> try to remain as inconspicuous as possible. I mean, if you saw an army of your enemies amassing on your border, you probably would be like, uh, could you not? Um, okay, so I've chosen uh, Tsu to actually take the lieutenant position in our daimyo's army. Makino, our son, of course, is uh, Terakuni, I should say. That's the thing with uh, Japanese names. Um, in the Western world, of course, it's your first name and then your last name. Uh, your family name as your last name, I should say. Uh, but in Japan, it's your family name first and then your first name. So in reality, when I'm saying Makino Terayuki, our daimyo's name is actually Teruyuki Makino, because Makino is the family name. So, I suppose I should be saying Teruyuki, uh, Narush... Oh, that's our captain, never mind. Um, Terukuni, and then whatever our... This guy's name is Kawai, is his first name. So we've got, uh, Teruyuki, Kawai, and then our son, Terukuni, heading back to Echigo. So, uh, a little confusing for me, I gotta admit, but there, he is going to... Uh, defend this place from further incursion. I can't imagine there's going to be any further incursion, but in reality, I think you do actually gain uh, bonuses to your town when you have a governor present. Um, I could be wrong. Garrison forces? That doesn't seem to be it. Who knows? Um, here's Echigo, actually. I forgot to take a look at this. Uh, province wealth is 1,600 gold coins. Our tax rate is 17%, um, and therefore we are receiving a tax income of 270. There we go. We have no growth no growth to speak of, because we don't have any buildings to increase growth. I think a harbor would do the trick. Yeah, two per turn, which is not bad, but uh, we're not actually trading at sea with anyone, so that would be a little worthless. I think we'll actually build some tenant fields, most likely. Um, we can also build this in in Gambling Den. Um, which is better? Uh, I think the Gambling Den is designed for traditionalists because it's negative two to modernization uh, to happiness whereas a market is more for economic growth so actually you know what let's build this market blammo um, and we'll just save our cash for next turn and actually you know what? let's recruit some more units let's go for two units of spear levy there we are um, you know what I am gonna get rid of these matchlock catchy and replace them with uh, well, actually, they're quite cheap. They're just as cheap as our levy infantry, so I'm just going to hold on to them. I'm not going to disband them unless their unit is weak. But now we can um, end the turn again uh, once our geisha, that is, gets towards North Shinano. Can she, like, enchant this army? No, it's the daimyo. We can distract the army, but that's not really worthwhile. 
And we can distract the garrison for 47%, but that's not really worthwhile either. Um, I can't tell what these garrison units are. I can't quite recall. Um, possibly, possibly Levy Garrison, that seems to be the case. Oh, a traditional Jojo would also... Oh, no, it's Levy Garrison. I think we're just going to have to deal with Levy Infantry when we get there. So our uh, spear units and our samurai can deal with that quite easily. We only have one unit of samurai, uh, Yari Kachi and... Or is it Yari Kashi? Hard to say. But anyway, uh, we're going to end the turn and just remain on the border yet again. <laughs> Creepy as all hell. We're ripping out our binoculars right now and staring south towards North Shinano. And of course, the enemy is being like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. They're probably just shitting their pants full on. Okay, we have a new mission as well to strengthen our position. We have to capture the following province of North Shinano, which is fucking wonderful because that's currently what we are doing. And once we do that, it will increase the spread of pro shogunate sentiment across all provinces. And that's something that we are totally fucking into. Um, our spear levy has spawned outside of Echigo, and they're two turns away from arriving in this army. Um, we still have a lot of gold to play with, so we can recruit a few more units as well. We may as well get some more uh, levy. There we go. I think the Spear Levy will arrive just in time for us to attack uh, Yukuniro Sanada. Um, Sanada, and uh, we can't actually build anything else in our home province because we're beginning to dwindle on the money front. I think next turn is either the end of winter or the beginning of spring. It's really hard to say. Um, here's Numata, that uh, pro-emperor place uh, that we're trading with. Unfortunately, our pro-shogun uh, sentiment is dropping turn by turn because we don't have any, uh, you know, uh, agents in there or anything, unfortunately. Let's just do another turn, actually. Oh my gosh, enemy shinobi detected outside of Masayori. Um, there he is. It's, uh... Oh no, that's his name, Masayori. My mistake. North Shinano is where he was. Shinano. Um, we've got two units of levy infantry. <laughs> Once again... Uh, arriving on the scene. We're going to pull this last unit of spear levy out of uh, our capital as well. And these guys will appear... Well, I don't know if they'll make it in time, actually. They may appear on the battlefield as reinforcements. Um, we can always get our gal pal Iha to <laughs> distract the, the garrison or the daimyo here um, when the time comes to it. Um, how's our clan development going? We've got one more turn until we research epic architecture, and then I think we'll probably head on to Consular Court because of the diplomatic bonus. That would be great. Um, we are extremely lacking in modernization. We have zero modernization points. Um, but it looks like our... Oh no, my mistake. Uh, I thought our growth was... Uh, well, our wealth, I should say, is beginning to grow. But no, it does not seem to be the case. This is what I kind of miss from uh, Rome 2, is the province wealth. I really liked this whole system where... Uh, you could either invest into short-term wealth, you know, you just gain uh, a bunch of wealth here, and then you would uh, tax that, or you could invest into long-term wealth where you would have less wealth here but more town growth, and then you would obviously gain more tax as the game went on. I thought that was a good system. It really uh, diversified your economy, but we're really uh, dealing with I think a simpler economy system in Rome too, where you just have you just have to specialize your provinces out the ass towards you know industry or agriculture or just culture, or whatever. And, I mean that that that's fine in its own way, but I really enjoyed the town growth uh, economy that they. I think it was introduced in Empire, Empire Total War, and then it was in Napoleon, and then of course in Shogun. Two Shogun Two, I should say. Um, but I, I miss this system. It's got to be said. Um, but you know what, I think uh, we can just do another turn here <laughs> and march onto North Shinano. Okay, we have researched epic architecture and that, um, oh, it's spring. And spring brings plus one happiness. Cute. Um, and now we have plus one to clan-wide happiness. Construction is cheaper. Uh, we can actually start training, uh, well... Researching administrative training, uh, which will reduce our modernization as well, unfortunately. Um, but it will also increase wealth by farms 10% and also reduce administration costs, which will actually increase our tax rate. 
which is quite good. So we'd go from 17% to 14, or sorry, 24%, I believe, um, which would be great. Um, what else? We can train consular court. I think that's probably what we're going to do. Actually, no, we can research arms deals, which will reduce the cost of modern units. I'm not too worried about that because we also uh, we already have a reduction in uh, training costs for modern units. I would rather have diplomatic relations. There we go. Okay, uh, we're going to build our army and then, of course, march 10 steps towards Norshinano. There we go. Uh, not a bad army. We've got uh, five units of spear levy, four levy infantry, a unit of line infantry, and then two units of catchy uh, matchlock and spear. And then two generals. Uh, nothing to build in our home province yet because we are currently waiting for the town to be uh, upgraded. I suppose we can just <laughs> uh, nominate certain towns for uh, growth. Just like straight up just build your town bigger. Uh, but that's not really how towns work, I don't think. Um, you know what, I'm really hell-bent on besieging North Shinano or at least getting into a battle situation. So we're going to do one more turn. Um, middle of spring, is, I think it's going to be our... There's four turns per season, so it's going to be the second season or second turn of spring, I should say. So, uh, when would spring begin? Um, hard to say. May? It's maybe May. I don't know. April, May. Uh, perhaps. Okay, here we go. We are now going to try to distract the garrison with Iha here. Or we can try to distract the army. Ooh. Um... What does the garrison thing do again? Um, okay, we can actually nullify the garrison for 1,000 gold uh, with a success rate of 44%, and we're going to try to do that. There you go. Oh my god, she danced her heart out, but nevertheless, it failed. The garrison is going to be present in our battle, unfortunately. Tadayuki, uh, his path has been blocked somehow. I don't really know what the hell that's about. Uh, but we built a large town in Echigo, and now we can build a... Oh my god, I forgot how many buildings there were. A lot of buildings, that's the answer. We can build a cadet school, which will allow us to recruit modern infantry right off the fucking bat. Um, I'm kind of wondering, do we want modern infantry, or do we want Shinsengumi? Uh, which will allow us to spread our influence. Or, even better yet, a cottage industry. My gosh. Uh, we'll build a cadet school, and once we get another province, we can... Uh, specialize that in trade, and we'll knock down the market here and build... Uh, uh, like a barracks of some kind, or the, the, what are they called, the, uh, I completely forget, they are the training camps, that's what it is, we'll build a training camp just to uh, boost our units even further, but here we go, we are going to besiege North Shinano, and then I think we're going to have to end the episode, unfortunately, but, uh, oh my gosh, they have a lot of levy infantry, this is <laughs> probably not going to go well for us, unless maybe we invoke a, uh, a field battle, uh, three turns until they're starved out. We can probably manage that. Our armies are about equal, I would say, um, men-wise. Uh, we have more melee infantry, but they've also got an additional unit of Yarikechi, but we've also got another unit of general infantry, so that's not bad. Let's just continue the siege, and then we'll uh, return to the siege of Norshinano next episode. So, thank you everyone for uh, watching the first episode of our new series, our new Fall of the Samurai series. It's going to be good fun. I don't know how long this series is going to go on as a whole, but I imagine within two or three months it's probably going to get rotated out for something else. Or perhaps if it's successful enough, like popular enough, that is, it may remain. Hard to say. Um, but I just fucking love this game. <laughs> thank you for watching everyone. I will see you guys next episode. Suddenly you gasp for air. <gasps> when you look down, Onif is holding a knife. Barry, what? What? Suddenly you gasp for air. When you look down, Onif is holding a knife buried deep in your ribs.